How Belief Works Chapter 2 There are certain people who have a baneful habit of constantly analysing everything. You can say that a thing works, but it is not enough. Before they can really accept a thing, they must analyse it, dissect it, pull it to pieces, tear it apart. They have no belief unless they can be made to see how it works. They are the people who crawl under cars, pull the clock or watch the pieces and bring out the microscope on every possible occasion. How does it work? Tell them that and they will believe. First of all then, let us turn the analysis on self. What are you? You are just so much electricity. Go in the dark and comb your hair vigorously. If you are in good health, you will hear the crackles and see the sparks fly out. This is the electricity in you. The world is full of electricity, magnetic substance. Take an amber bead and keep rubbing it hard. By the electricity you have generated, your little amber bead is at once magnetic to minute pieces of paper. Similarly, a sheet of brown paper which has been held before the fire and is brushed hard will adhere to the wall or any flat surface. Why? Because it has become magnetised by the electricity you have generated. What is that to do with bringing out the magic in your mind? Well, in everything. Electricity attracts, makes you magnetic, draws things to you. You don't store up the electricity within you, stand in front of a brand new car and draw it to you just like that. There is much more to it than that. I am only trying to make you conscious that electricity counts. It is a vital part of that brings out magic of your mind. So that you can get the things that you want. Some people who are ill in bed are told that it is, is a consoling thing to have a cat for company and stroke it. So the pet is put on the bed and they stroke it and stroke it and stroke it. But the reason really is that by stroking the cat they get some of the electricity from its body and this helps to strengthen them and get them better. The power to attract is within you but you must be ever conscious that you possess it. There must be a constant awareness. You must know how to generate it to create. Not repel. And that is what I am going to tell you about. The pole from north to south, running through the centre of the earth, is magnetised. Whether you know it before or not. And in like manner, the human body is a magnet. There are many ways in which you can generate this magnetism. One is to see that you sleep with the head of your bed north so that you are parallel with the magnetic pole running through the earth and not lying across it this is very important for it is this way that magnetic currents move from the head to the feet and you get full capacity instead of merely a slice across the body some people wonder why they are so restless and often cannot sleep this could be the answer they are lying in opposition so important is this north to south parallel that some people who really do accomplish the most magical things because they have the know-how make it a ritual to face north when they send out any dynamic thought wish. No kidding, believe me, there are people who make a point of being in alignment with the earth's magnetic current so that their own magnetic powers are amplified. Crazy, I can't swallow that you say. But what is foolishness in the eyes of men is wisdom to the Tibetans. You smile, you still have your doubts. This is all new and fanciful to you. Skepticism is imperfect knowledge. It is, in a sense, slow suicide. The poet Novali says, To become imperfectly acquainted with a truth, we must first have disbelieved it. So there is hope for you. Difficult to grasp? Difficult to believe? It was difficult 2,000 years ago too. The White Queen in Alice, through the looking glass, practised believing the impossible. She believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Be positive. Believe. A masseuse told me how he could see magnetic currents in the universe. Some days, he said, these currents seem to move faster than others. 
they appear white and look like fine rain coming down, he said. Then he told me that some of his patients could see these currents. He always made it a practice to keep the head of his massage table to the magnetic north so as to use the currents to the best advantage. One of my patients was so sensitive to the north-south position, he said, that if the table was only a few inches off magnetic north, she sensed it, and upon checking with his compass he found she was right every time. You must be constantly aware that just as the earth is magnetized, so the human body is a magnet charged with electricity. Didn't you know that there is a mighty power in the world the scientists call electromagnetism? Didn't you know that everything is electromagnetism? Electromagnetic? That everything is energy? The laws of attracting and repelling operate electromagnetically. This is an important thing to remember if you want to bring out the magic in your mind. Don't kid yourself. Belief cannot work magic unless you are conscious of the fact that you have a drawing power and do everything you can to make it stronger and stronger, i.e. raise your vibration. Are you perfectly happy with your position in life? Are you enjoying life to its fullest extent? Are you getting all the things in life you want? So much depends on how you relax. Do you sit with your legs crossed, your arms folded, or your hands clasped? If you do, it is fatal. This cuts off your receiving power and makes you negative. Remember never to cross your legs if possible. Fold your arms or clasp your hands. Be awake all the time to what you want and what you must do to receive the power to get it. There are times, of course, when you want to cut off bad influences. Some bows, someone is arguing or trying to pick a quarrel. Discordant thoughts are not for you and you must cut off the power of evil by crossing your legs, folding your arms and clasping your hands. If you have an analytical mind, you will like to probe into this truth of electricity. Look to the Bible, it is full of it. When the great master of magic walked on the water, the light all around was dazzling. He who did the seemingly impossible always appeared, surrounded with great brilliance, surrounded by electromagnetism. The angel of the resurrection, whose face was like lightning, struck terror into the hearts of the sentry guard, in which there were perhaps four or six men. There was something terrific in this light to frighten those hardened Roman soldiers. It was electricity. A star might change, but a ray of light could never change. It goes on and on, even as your thoughts are going through space, never altering its speed, never destroyed. Light goes on forever. That's how dynamic electricity is, the light you generate within yourself. The north of the magnetic pole is positive and the south is negative. Every time you are negative in your thoughts and words, you automatically separate yourself from the electromagnetism. A positive condition is always a magnetic condition, a condition that brings out the magic. Belief is a positive word and therefore creative. Everything positive is alive and works. Everything negative is dead and has no creative power whatever. Negative means reject, to put aside, not to be used. You must polarize your thoughts and words. It means learning to think differently and speak differently. There must be a complete switch over from negative attitudes to positive ones, from I don't know what to believe to I believe. I can't make head or tail of it, you say. Try it. Like Edison said when they asked him about what electricity was, he said he could not explain it, but try it. Now back to the Fiji Islands and the firewalkers. How do they do it? Magic, of course. Well, for one thing, there is a 10 days course of purification. And one of the things they put great importance on is breathing. They will go out into the open, put up their hands and take in deep breaths of air. Then they will appear to grasp at an invisible something as though they were trying desperately to catch this electromagnetism. They attach great importance to deep breathing and trying to catch the air. They do this to lift themselves into a higher dimension, and I think they do. 
There is much more to it than that, but I want to emphasize the importance of deep breathing to anyone who wants to work magic. What else do they do? They practice self-discipline. It is a part of their preparation. When the 10 days course is over, they are able to heal the sick, mark barren women give birth, make barren women give birth, and many magical things. The fire walkers are in complete ecstasy as they walk over the burning cinders. If flames leap up in front of them, they continue their steps unmoved by it. When onlookers want to examine their feet, they consider this stupid. Why can't we be less materialistic and look at the power, they say. Purification is a most important thing with them, and they will make no attempt until they have cleansed themselves physically and morally. More about this later. This power, this electromagnetism, this belief that they can walk on red-hot cinders, all is the magic anyone can do who prepares himself. This is a great thing, and believe. So what do you do? You fill yourself with this power by practicing deep breathing, like the firewalkers, the yogi, and the Tibetans. Do your deep breathing in the open air if possible, or by an open window. Oxygen possesses very considerable magnetic properties, and you must make good use of them. You cannot recharge your battery without. Shallow breathing actually breeds inefficiency of the mind. To bring out the magic in your mind, a full oxygen intake must be a daily conscious habit. Make a note of this in your diary book. Deep, deep breathing from the lower abdomen is key. There is an accident. What happens? Dozens of people seeming to come in from nowhere. Suddenly crowd around the poor and Varshina victim. A voice echoes through the medley of men and women. Give him air, give him air. Air, that magical something which makes all the difference between life and death. Unless you can help it, don't seek the petrol-laden air of the busy streets. There is the wonderful tonic air of the hilltops. There is the salt sea air of our lovely watering places and seasides, and you are lucky if you live within easy reach. Then there is the air that is like no water of the sky. Fly in an open plain if you can get the chance, or join a gliding club. Climb a mountain if you are that way inclined, and get very high. You need not try for the top, where the air is very pure. The great psychologist was always taking himself to the hills for long periods to reinforce himself. Long periods. In silence, stillness and solitude. Native air is of vast importance. If you can return to the place where you were born and practice deep breathing, you will soon realize that you feel much better breathing your native air. This is a fact. And because you are better, you can the more easily bring out the magic in your mind. You can think and act more clearly. Have, we, have you ever thought about the air crews? Their mental alertness soon drops when their oxygen intake is affected. They have to be very oxygen-minded. It is essential to the lives of their passengers who depend upon their air alertness for a safe journey. When flying over 10,000 feet, at 30,000 feet, they have to do something about it or they would get mentally vague and could not do their job properly. Regular deep breathing is a necessary thing towards making belief work. A professor told me that we have 72,000 nerve centers destined for the transmission of electromagnetic forces. We only lose about 5,000 of them. Deep breathing helps us use more. Think of the magic we could do if we cultivated a lot. And why not? These 72,000 centers are not there for nothing. Take deep breaths of this electromagnetism. Try it. Live it. Love it. Become it. Don't worry about what it is, but use it. This vital substance in which we live, move and have our being can mean nothing to you unless you are aware of its enormous power and make use of it to work magic. Electricity is a substance and all and everybody is immersed in it. I breed tropical fish, but like the fishes who live in the water and do not realize they are in water, so is it with humans. This substance is very delicate and most impressionable. Every time you think a thought, it registers and comes back to you according to the vibrations and wavelengths sent out from your mind. 
It was Emerson who said, Be careful what you set your heart on, for it will surely be yours. And somebody else said, When a thinker is let loose on the planet, look out, for something is going to happen. There are materialists who will ridicule the idea that thoughts set up wavelengths. But remember what has been done with radar and how radio waves go through brick walls, steel and other so-called solid objects. To give you a clearer idea of the radiation of thoughts, let us toss a pebble into the pond. You will see ripples are small waves. They spread out in circles and ultimately reach the shore where they appear to stop. Two stones of different sizes and weights tossed in simultaneously at different places will both set up ripples of waves converging on each other and where the two stones meet there appears to be a struggle as to which is to overcome the other. The larger stone sweeps over the smaller and creates waves in the wake of the small ripples. The bigger your thought, the more forceful, the more vital will sweep over all the small thoughts and win through. When we send a thought out into this substance in which we all live, it sets up waves, and the positive thought is much bigger, giving a quicker tempo, a far greater vibration. Your positive thoughts sweep all aside as you plunge them into this ocean of electricity. They will sweep all over everything to reach their objective, because positive thoughts are like the biggest pebble. They have the higher wave and frequency. What happens if you believe? That is a question that occurs to every mind in spite of the effort that some make to persuade themselves that nothing happens. At the Delaware laboratories where they test out thought waves, they believe that a concentrated th thought produces a pattern of that thought. A man sat in front of a special photographic apparatus and concentrated for two seconds on a penknife. This produced a perfect picture of the penknife which the man was thinking about. Then another man who simply did not believe in this sort of thing concentrated on the penknife for a photograph. But because there was disbelief, the film was a foggy mess and no penknife was visible at all. They take these photographs with amazing results. A photograph was taken of ordinary tap water and then a photograph of water which had been blessed. The tap water film showed very thin radiations but the blessed water had enormous radiations. So there is something in it, whether you like it, to believe it or not. Dr. Moto, a Japanese scientist, has done more studies on this and fascinating images. Our belief is to each other, each one of us, the most precious thing we have. People with little or no belief will try to lead you astray and if you listen to them you will be led to forget these truths and the memory of all this knowledge will fade away. Some people expect luck to be handed to them on a silver plate without any effort on their part whatever. You must learn to stand on your own mental and moral feet as an individual and be able to say no to the things that you do not want to happen. You must rebel and say I will have no more of this kind of evil then it stops. You do not believe me? Try it for yourself. Say, I'll have no more of this from now on. And lo, by the magic you have brought out of your mind, the trouble stops. True, you may have to face adverse opinions and other little troubles, but if you stand firm and rebel against all that worries you, you will down the evil from the moment you decide to do it. Decision always magnetizes. Success is a decision away. When you decide to stop worrying, you start an immediate magnetic action which works for your good. Never be afraid of they. People are more afraid of they than anything else in the world. Do not be afraid if you are laughed at. Take heart from the fact that sniggerers made Epstein famous. When they laughed at one thing he did, he simply turned around and made, to their eyes, even more fantastic sculpture. They left at what and the kettle lid, but what did not care. He believed and got on with his job and gave the world her locomotives. They left at Marconi. Even his own father left at him. He wanted him to throw up his ambitions and grow up as a country gentleman and study music. But Marconi believed in himself 
and preferred to experiment with electrical equipment in the attic. His father more than once threatened to throw it all out the window. Marconi cared nothing for the world thought and became one of the greatest men since Christopher Columbus. He harnessed the ether to the service of men. The Fords, the Edisons, the Marconis, Einsteins and Da Vinci's and many others who have accomplished great things all began with mind. There is not and never has been an individual, a leader who has not been laughed at. But do not be discouraged. Great people believe in a positive way and all the sniggering in the world cannot stop them working magic. It is up to each one of us to ponder upon their belief and backed by the memory of their spectacular courage say unshakingly, I can and I will. Remember those wonderful words and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to me. Your belief can bring out the magic in your mind. If people laugh at you and your super optimism, know that it was exactly the same 2,000 years ago. And he marvelled at their unbelief. From Mark chapter 4, lines verses 2 to 6. To recap, because I must be certain that you won't forget it, you are just so much electricity. And this electricity must be kindled as a fire in a stove at first gently until it springs of itself into a full glow. You can abide this electricity in a bottle over the counter. It is part of you which awaits development. Spiritual, mental, physical, moral development. Water may save your life if you are thirsty, but it may also drown you. The same applies to electricity, as it will work magic beneficially implied, but it can cause death otherwise. You must know how to use the power you possess, and I am trying to tell you. The more electricity you develop, the stronger your belief, and the more powerful you do become. Mr. Brian Matthews, broadcasting from the BBC Studio London in November 1930, demonstrated successfully that the human body generates electric current which can be led off from various parts of the body. He produced a twentieth of a volt, amplified it, and rang a bell. Consider for a moment Charles R. Gibson. Says in his book, Modern Conceptions of Electricity, now that we know that everything, every existing thing is composed of electricity, energy, electricity attracts. We are made of electricity. Everything is energy, vibration, frequency. Or everything is energy, vibrating at different frequencies. Without electricity, you would not be. If your electricity took its flight, you would not be seen on this earth plane anymore because the body has no light of itself. Every time you send out a destructive thought, you automatically separate yourself from your electricity, just as though you had pressed a button and the electrical light had gone out. Negative thoughts of poverty, sickness and limitation separate you from your electricity and your light is obscured because you have disconnected yourself. If you do it too often, you will go out, you will die. The AIM program, aimprogram.com, and several others can now measure people's life force, no matter where they are on the planet. Actual life force readings on a scale of 1 to 100. Scientific variable proof, 2015. You recharge your battery by using positive words and thinking positive thoughts. Elizabeth Barrett, the poetess, was a cripple. She could not walk. What happened when she fell in love with Robert Browning, the poet? He was very determined that she should walk. He talked to her in a very positive way, and soon she did walk, from a distance right into his arms, and that was the beginning of a beautiful romance. She loved, she believed. Two of the greatest forces were at work, and the magic came. If you believe that you can lift your hand to your head, you can do it easily, quickly, automatically. But if you don't believe that you can do it, your hand stays put 
magic will not work for a doubting mind. Never will it work with disbelief. You may be confronted on all sides by appalling obstacles. Disease, poverty, pain, fear, hatred, curses. But you can overcome them all with belief. Our doubts are our traitors, said Shakespeare. Has it ever occurred to you that you have for many years been a traitor to yourself? If it is true, and it is, that all our doubts and negative thoughts hold us back from what we want, from all we want, isn't it better to believe? A man who shows some determination is a man who has got belief in himself. You have the power within you to make your world. Mould it, create it any way you want. Your environment, just what you want it to be. You can create mentally a new life for yourself. You can build a new world for yourself through visualisation. Whatever you believe and mentally create, you can have. Be and do anything you want. You can dissolve or overcome any obstacle. If obstacles are in the way of attainment, then you are not using the magic power within your mind. Belief can carry you far. Belief can make you do the seemingly impossible, the fantastic, like I did. It was when I went to entertain troops in the Middle East. At Tripoli, I came upon a challenge. A gentleman came up to me and introduced himself as the editor-proprietor of the Sunday Ghibli, the only Sunday paper there in Tripoli in the English language. He explained how he had read all the advance notices before I flew over from Malta, admitted and admitted that he simply did not believe them. So he outlined the challenge. In the office of the chief of police there was a sealed and taped steel box. He would allow me to inspect the box and I was then to tell him what was inside. I went to the chief of police who was a fine Egyptian character commanding respect. Locked in his safe was a box which, when produced, was found to be tied and taped up. For a few moments I held the box silently in my hands. Well, he pressed, what is in it? Let the box be brought to the theatre tonight, I answered him. I am content. I know what is inside. So that night the night was boxed with a police escort. The night the box was brought with a police escort to the theatre. And before the tapes and seals were cut, I stood before the footlights and told the audience I knew what was inside the box. It was a cheque. It is for ten pounds, I said, and is made out to the Lord Mayor of London for the Flood Relief Fund. To their utter astonishment, when the box was opened, there was the cheque. I drew hysterical praises and was shaken warmly by the hand. The cheque was torn up and another written out for double the amount. This touch of magic in Tripoli caused a very real sensation. For Tripoli lies along the shore of an ancient seed of miracles and magic. You too can bring out the magic in your mind.